Howdy guys, welcome back to BRG Photography. This is Ben, and in this video, I wanna show you how you can touch up your seamless backdrop so it looks nice and professional. All right, guys, welcome back. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So if you're ever shooting in a studio and you're using a seamless backdrop uh, paper for your background, you know, a lot of times it doesn't always come down perfect. There might be creases in it. Um, throughout the course of shooting, you might get scuff marks and scratches on the floor. There might be wrinkles. Depending how the paper was stored and rolled up, you might get weird just creases. And I find those things quite distracting. So I wanna show you how you can clean them up, but I wanna show you how you can do it naturally so that it doesn't look like you just painted over the background with a solid gray color, because that can also look very fake. So I'm gonna show you a few techniques you can use to just really keep it looking like it's a natural gray backdrop, but really cleaning it up so it looks nice and professional. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is basically I wanna duplicate my layer so I have a brand new layer to work with. And then I wanna create a mask separating her from the background so that we can paint on the background um, without having to worry about painting on her. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the selection brush tool. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Oops. Let's zoom in and I'm gonna just start at the top. And you notice that Affinity's selection brush tool just snaps to the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this really quickly. Um, if you happen to kind of accidentally select something you don't want to, like this part here, you can hit the Alt or Option key on a Mac and paint over it. And you're basically telling Affinity Photo not to do that. In here, same thing, I'm pressing the Alt or Option key and just kind of selecting this part and it should do a pretty good job of finding the edges. We're gonna refine this later, so I'm not gonna get super, super detailed, but let me just go ahead and select this really quick. Okay, so now we have our selection. We're gonna do a quick refine. We're gonna go ahead and press the refine button up here, and we should see our masks cut out. All I wanna do is basically paint over uh, these hair parts to basically tell Affinity Photo to take a look at this part again and it'll do a pretty good job of kind of masking the hair uh, correctly and nice and nice and good okay and let's see some gray there needs to be fine and if we want to get really detailed I'm not going to in this video just because I think you've seen me mask out stuff in other videos that so we can always go to preview and change it to black and white. And there we'll see a really nice clean cutout of our mask. And you can see here, for example, like it grabs some of the tag. I can switch to a foreground brush to basically paint. And it kind of tells Affinity Photo that this is actually part of the foreground or the subject we want selected and not the background. But for this video, this is gonna be fine. Uh, there's no other major issues here. If I really wanted to, I could spend time really cleaning up this selection so it looks really nice but we're going to output it to a mask anyways which will give us the ability to refine our mask manually later if we want to so for now this is fine so for output we're going to select mask hit apply and now we have a mask of her right here and we can see that if i hold down the alt or option key and select that new layer i can see she is cut out from the background so if i were to create a new layer below there and grab a paintbrush and just start painting with a color, you'll notice that I'm not painting on her. I'm painting behind her, which is exactly what we want to do. So with that new layer I just made, let's go ahead and first do a little bit of cleanup. And we've done this before with Affinity Photos in Painting Brush Tool and making sure we have current layer and below selected. I'm just going to come over here and just start cleaning up some of these white spots. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this really quick because you guys know the routine, you know how this works. Okay, so I basically just kind of cleaned up that floor a little bit like that. Uh, it's not too perfect. You know, maybe you might wonder why don't I just come over here and just in paint the whole thing. And this will probably actually work. But I noticed that it just does a better job if you just do little parts by little parts. It seems to do a better job of really blending it into the background a bit nicer. So that's why I kind of take my time and just do little parts little by little. Now we could use that same technique to kind of get rid of 
all these little wrinkles here, you know, if we really wanted to, but that's a lot of little folds and wrinkles that I want to don't want to deal with. So we're going to show you, or I'm going to show you uh, another way to kind of do that. So with that new layer selected where we had our cleanup, I'm going to make a new layer on top of that because on this layer, we're going to do some major painting. As we can see, we have her against a gray backdrop, even though it's not really gray. If I go to my eyedropper tool, and I do a selection of, let's just do an average of five by five. So it's gonna take an average selection of five pixels by five pixels, like a square of five by five pixels, and give me the average color in there. And I go ahead and select somewhere around here. You'll notice that there is color in this backdrop. If we have six points of this blue color, if I come over here, eight points of this blue color. So this is not actually a true gray background. So the first thing I wanna do, is I wanna make that gray. So let me go ahead and go one layer below and I'm going to go to a HSL adjustment layer and with all colors selected, just grab our saturation, pull it all the way down. Now I'm working with a totally gray background and this will be really useful in one of our last steps and you'll see why I like doing it like this. Now we're going to select that new layer we just created above our hue saturation adjustment layer and we are going to grab a paintbrush with uh, low flow, 2%, 0% hardness. And by holding down the Alt or Option key and we press down, we can kind of bring up the eyedropper tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a color like around here. And we're just gonna start painting like this. Now this is very important, is we're not doing something where we're gonna say grab 100%. We're not doing this. We're not come over here and just painting, you know, because that does not look real. This does not look real. It doesn't look like she's anywhere. She's like a, a in space, like an empty void. So what we want to do with our painting is we want to keep our painting looking natural by constantly sampling and resampling different colors. So for example, here, I sample here and I kind of paint like this. And the bigger the brush, the better the blend. And maybe this darker gray, I'm going to come over here and just kind of paint here. Some of these darker folds we have here, you know, gonna get rid of that. And we're just gonna kind of slowly work it with our low flow brush. And we can come here and here we have this big fold, this big crease. I don't like that. So we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of it. This darker part, I want to keep it kind of dark. I think it's supposed to be her shadow here. Uh, so we're going to kind of do it like this. Maybe grab this medium part to kind of help blend it in. And maybe grab this lighter part. And this is a glitch that Affinity Photo has. Sometimes it'll just randomly grab the 100% red saturation, even though obviously there's no red in here. But this is something I hope they're going to fix soon, or hopefully was their new version. This will be announcing soon, so we'll see what happens. But anyways, we're going to be constantly sampling, grabbing colors. And of course, we have some freedom. We can kind of, you know, if I really wanted this dark area gone, I could just grab a lighter one and just really just paint out and do something like that. But personally, I kind of like having a little bit of that unevenness because it helps sell that it's real, you know. Even though we want the background, like, here we go, come on, Affinity. Even though we want the background to, um, you know, be clean and smooth, we still want to look like real. We still want to look like she is in a studio against a gray backdrop of seamless gray paper. We don't want to look perfect or too artificial. And we can even do the floor a little bit here like so, and maybe if we wanted to like blend in a bit more, that part where we were doing the retouching, we can kind of like blend that in. This part where the paper folds, we have a darker gray, we can kind of go this way to kind of help simulate that kind of fold. And we can get it looking pretty smooth. Okay, so I think we're gonna go ahead and say this is gonna be done, not done, we're not done yet, but this part's done, all righty. So for a lot of people, this might be fine. You're fine with this. This was our before, this is the after. We've managed to keep a lot of that you know, uh, inconsistency in the values, but we got rid of all the distracting wrinkles and folds in the background paper. But while we were doing that, 
if we zoom in a little bit, for example, maybe around here, and I go off and on, you'll notice that we lost a lot of that natural texture that's in the paper, but also some of that natural camera noise and camera um, grain, I guess you could say. And so what I want to do is I want to bring that back. And we're going to do that by creating a Perlin noise layer. So let's go ahead and make a brand new layer. And let's just go ahead and call this one noise. And we are going to go to filters, noise, Perlin noise. And you have to make sure I made a mistake here. You have to make sure that your colors are black and white. So this was gray. Let's go ahead and change that to white. Let's do that again. Filter, noise, Perlin noise. And probably by default, I was playing with this earlier. You might have something that kind of looks like this. So octaves, zoom, and persistence. Octaves, I like to have all the way at the very 16 pixels because that's going to give us the most uh, variation uh, between our little noise. Zoom, this is going to basically be how big and small the noise is. At its max size, this is where you get the kind of cloud look. But we're going to come in really small. Let's go ahead and zoom in to 100%. I'm going to hit Command-1 on my Mac keyboard to go to 100%. So let's go ahead and pick a size that we felt kind of looks like how it was before. Let's just say there because we can alter. We will be able to alter this later. Persistence, I like to have that all the way at the top. That's going to basically really help blend in that noise a bit better. And maybe I'll make the zoom a little bit bigger. And I like that. We're going to hit apply. Now, of course, that's not looking real. So first, what I want to do is I want to switch this to soft light. Now, soft light actually kind of does a lot of the job there. You can see here is no noise. This is now noise. We zoom in a little bit. You can see that we brought in some kind of it's not the typical like film grain noise, but it looks like something a bit more organic. If I turn our original layer back on, this was how it looked like before. And there is some natural paper texture and grain. And this is with our painting. And now this is with our noise. We can always reduce the opacity to help blend it in a bit better. But another thing you can do is we can take that noise layer we just made and we're going to offer it, make it a child layer of that pixel layer that we painted. So we do that by dragging it, getting the blue bar, not all the way across, slide it to the right and get it just right there. And what that's going to do, it's going to make sure that that uh, adjustment layer, that noise layer is only affecting the parts that we painted. If I hold down my alter option key, you can see here, this is what we painted. So actually there's a lot that we didn't paint. We didn't paint this whole right side very much. We painted a lot here and that noise is only being applied to the areas that we painted and that actually helps a lot to really sell uh, the effect so it kind of blends in nicely with the noise that was already there so you can see for example this is let me brush smaller this is before because we didn't really paint too much here and you can see where our perlin noise has kind of been added here and if we think it's still too much we can always lower the opacity and kind of just getting it looking pretty uh, realistic. I think that looks really good. I'm not even sure if you can see this on YouTube. You can even see the grain. And, you know, at this size, if you're putting it on social media and it's going to be seen like that, grain or no grain, it's not. you're not going to be able to tell the difference at all. But, you know, if you're doing something where you're going to be bigger or you do want to show like 100% crop, something like that, having a little bit of that natural uh, grain and noise might look really cool. And let's say that you kind of made a mistake. Like, you know, I want the grain to be a bit bigger. Well, just highlight that noise layer again. Go back to filter, noise, Perlin noise, and just kind of redo it. But this time it's already uh, attached to that painting layer and it's already set to soft light. So you'll get a better idea how you can really preview how it's really going to look. Maybe you want it to be more pronounced. You can do things like that. That way you can really see um, how that noise layer is going to look. And we can go back and you can remake it as many times as you want. Go back to Perlin noise and kind of figure out, you know, maybe the high octaves looks nice. Maybe lower octaves looks nice. High low persistence. You can play with this and find a kind of zoom noise persistence octave level that looks good for what you want. And then I can come over here and still play with my opacity to make it look really natural. So let's do something like that. There we go. 
almost done. Well, we are done. But the main reason why I like to make sure I work with a black and white layer or it's a purely black and white gray background, not black and white gray background is what I meant to say, a purely gray background, is that if I want to change the color of the background, I know I'm not getting any kind of like um, color cast on my new color. So for example, let's say I want to make a blue background. I'm going to go ahead, go to layer, new uh, new fill layer, and we're going to switch that. I'm like, oops, oops. we got to make sure we put that above or right below the mask, above all of our painting. And then we're going to switch that to soft light. And with our little, uh, make sure you have your, what's this tool called? Move tool selected. Then you can go ahead and change the color. And because we're using soft light, it does a really good job of basically retaining the shadows and the natural uh, tones of the background. And you can play around and make any kind of color go for any kind of mood that you might want. And if we had a already color cast in our backdrop, it just changes the color a little bit. So I like knowing that I'm kind of working with a pure gray background when I'm adding a new color fill layer on top. So I know that, that colors are kind of a bit more true. But that is all. That is how we can basically take our kind of messy, wrinkly background, clean it up, making it look still like a background, but a bit clean, a bit more professional looking and seamless like how it should be okay guys thank you very much for watching that's all for this video i uh, hope you guys um well i guess i hope you guys are doing great hope you guys keep on retouching and i do appreciate you guys watching my videos this video was actually from a comment someone had asked me someone had commented that they really wish they'd like to see how i clean up my backdrop so if you know who you are this video is for you and everybody else hope to help you guys out and as always thanks for watching and i will see you next time Later.